Hello, welcome back. We're continuing to work on our skills with adding and subtracting rational, I'm sorry, radical expressions. Uh, the problems here are it's going to involve more work because they'll have more, we'll have more complicated fractions and things to deal with. And in the next lesson, we'll finally be simplifying these uh, expressions that involve variables as well. But I encourage you to go through all of these because they're very simple to do, but they are tedious. So you have to be careful. So in other words, they're simple to understand what to do, but sometimes hard to do because of the amount of steps. In fact, there's one problem here I'll, I'll share with you now. Um, this, this page right here. I actually worked it one way and it took three quarters of the entire page and then I saw a slightly different way to do it and I, and I did that in a very small amount of space. So sometimes thinking about what to do before doing it actually can save you a lot of work. And I'll show that to you as we get there. I'll explain what I did and, and kind of like how I did it a different way. So what if I have the square root of 6 minus the square root of 24 and then on the bottom it'll be square root of 2. All right, so we want to do that. Now, we have a couple things we don't like. We do not like the denominator being a square root of 2, but we also don't like the numerators because they're different radicals and we can't really subtract them. Let me give you a piece of advice here in the beginning. Um, in general, not always, but often, you want to save killing all the radicals in the denominator until the end of the problem. If you start doing it in the beginning too, too often, sometimes when you can have to multiply by more radicals, you'll end up with more more radicals in the denominator so you can get in a situation where you clear the, like if you have parentheses or something and you clear the radical in the denominator, you do all that work, then you have something on the outside that multiplies in and you get another radical on the bottom and then you have to do the whole thing again. So in this case, let's just kind of hang on to that square root of 2. I know it's tempting to multiply by square root of 2 over square root of 2 and you can do that, but for now let's just focus on the numerator. All right. Um, the square root of 6 is not going to simplify any more because 6 is 2 times 3 and there's no pairs there. But we can take a look at 24 and hopefully we'll get lucky here. So four, uh, 24 is 6 times 4, 4 is 2 times 2, and 6 is 3 times 2. I'm looking for pairs because it's a square root. I have a pair there. So in the numerator here, the square root of 6 didn't simplify anymore. So it's the square root of 6 minus the square root of 24. I have a single 2 that comes out. And then underneath here, I have 3 times 2. So in the past, I've been writing it as 3 times 2, but now you've got enough practice under your belt, you know that what is left over is 3 times 2. So it's going to be a 6 under that radical. And then I have on the bottom a square root of 2. Now you see why that was nice, because now I have a square root of 6 minus 2 square root of 6. So I have 1 minus 2, which is going to give me negative 1 square root of 6. On the bottom, I will have a square root of 2. Right? Now everything is great other than this denominator, which I don't like. So let me rewrite it. It's going to be negative root 6 over root 2. And then I have to multiply by something to get rid of that in the bottom. What am I going to do? Square root of 2 over square root of 2. And so what I'll get in the end here is, on the bottom anyway, it'll have 2 times 2 is 4, but I like to write it as 2 squared with that radical around it because I'm canceling them. I still have a negative sign. These radicals are multiplied, which I can do under the radical as a square root of 12. All right, square root of 12. All right, so then I come over here and take a look at, well, what, how can I simplify the square root of 12? Is that, I'm going to have that my final answer. That's 3 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. I have a single pair that I'm looking for here. And so what I'm going to get then is I'll have that negative sign. That's still there. It's going to be the single 2 that comes out, square root of what is left over, which is 3. On the bottom, the square root cancels with the square, giving me a 2.